All right, YouTube, I apologize for all the little floaty things. It was incense time only a few minutes ago, so not much I can do about that fact. Um, it's time for Occult Literature video number 81, the Chaldean account of the Deluge. Now, this is a short work, uh, rel you know, it's in, in the 30 to 40 page range. It's extremely important, but at the same time, it's, it's short. Most people don't know it exists. Uh, it was eclipsed by a later, longer work, The Chaldean Account of Genesis, by the same author, George Smith. And it details uh, sort of the archaeological findings of that era, the 1870s. He was working at Nineveh, he worked elsewhere, uh, and one of the uh, cuneiform tablets, and he was self-taught at how to translate this, which was remarkable, um, was part of the Epic of Gilgamesh. And what we see with this text, the reason why it's important, historically speaking, this is, in a way, the birth of modern occultism. It's the birth, specifically, of sort of the Crowley and Blavatsky mystery school, ancient mythology, ancient alien stuff. Uh, basically, everything stems from archaeology. It's archaeology at its core that's responsible for modern occultism. Uh, taking off from that, you know, pre-modern period of Victorian and Edwardian occultism. Now, as always, link in the description to where you can purchase my edition of this work off of Amazon. A second link in the description as well for my books blog. There are many other materials available, including some of these important spiritually related academic works. There's uh, the Aradia by Leland and so forth there. I will be adding two more works by Charles Leland as well as several other academic works. I am going to make that its own category in time. Um, this work specifically details the early transcription of what would become the 11th tablet uh, within the Epic of Gilgamesh. It speaks about the story, it's, it's essentially the story of Genesis as told 10 centuries before Genesis was ever thought of uh, by the Judaists. This is the basis for latter-day Babylonian uh, materials on the subject, uh, you've got to understand the story within the Bible of the world flood is not original to Judaism. Uh, the story dates to many centuries before a single word was jotted down for many of the Old Testament traditions. The earliest fragments uh, of any of those works are later by centuries uh, than some of these materials that come out of Samaria and Babylon and so forth. It wasn't until the Jewish people uh, actually uh, were interacting with the Babylonians that they even had such material within their canonical sort of works. Uh, because they were borrowing it from them, they simply readapted them. Uh, and George Smith points out the similarities and the contrasts within here. Of course, the gods themselves, the pantheon uh, at the time, uh, actually is, is terrified of what uh, Bell is doing here. It speaks of Nurgle, uh, which is uh, rather interesting to me. Uh, another one of these Sumerian deities, sort of a demonic uh, deity, so to speak. But Bell and, and all of these other antagonists are causing a tempest. It's not a world tempest. Um, it's, uh, it's not quite the same as the Genesis account uh, of the world flood. But nonetheless, it causes mass destruction, uh, and, and only a small number of people are actually spared from this. In this story, uh, the birds aren't sent out one by one. It's just a bunch of birds that are sent out. But the basic element of the story is basically the same. It's obvious if you read these works, if you read about the Tempest from the 11th tablet, you can see where the Jews got the idea for, <laughs> for their uh, destruction story of Noah and so forth. They've simply substituted a Jewish family in uh, and made it the result uh, of sin against their specific deity. They simply absorbed the canonical material, retold it in a new form with a different moral message, of course. And the ship is not the same. Um, you, you, the length of the flood is not the same. But it's because of this, it's the rediscovery of the ancient that made modern occultism in a way possible. So that being said, this is one of the most important occult works, while not strictly itself being about the occult. It's about a, an ancient tablet from Samaria, uh, and it's an archaeological writing, uh, number one. And number two, 
um, it, it's, it literally leads directly to the sort of Atlantean, Blavatsky, spiritualism sort of movements. This short precursor period of, of what was then completely secular science, but almost always biblical science. They were looking for the Ark, they were looking for Noah's Ark, they were looking for the Grail and so forth. As they dug through these ruins, what they instead found were a lot of pagan legends. And those directly informed, because the Jews borrowed most of their canonical material from Samaria, Babylonia, from the Egyptians and so forth, what ends up happening is that the retelling of, of basically the entire human timeline in both a scientific and an archaeological sense as well as a spiritual sense becomes possible. Uh, it also leads directly to the modern day dilemma in which Christian zealots and Jewish zealots and Islamic zealots as well are being challenged on aspects of their religions, specifically because they don't, they still in many cases do not wish to admit that they're not actually the progenitors of much of the material that they consider divine and blessed and holy. So it's a very, very important work, very highly recommended. I will eventually get to, as well, uh, the longer derivative work, but this is the primary manuscript, the primary original pamphlet that basically started it all. It's one of the most important precursor works to modern occultism. That's about all. Peace out.